Live, live, yeah, oh. we live, live, brother. Get these hardware warnings. <laughs> hey, welcome to the mothership, yo. What's up? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Hey, it's the Who That Podcast. How y'all doing? Um, we are live for another episode of the best podcast this side of the Mississippi and the Nile River. We are the the bees knees. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, as always, it's your boy B. How you doing? And we have the captain, Paco. He's Paco again. What's up, what's up, Then we have Cap Paco. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the light-skinned, sincere Sean. Devon. Back here, baby. <laughs> Had to move back here. De- no, bro, you can't be telling people about my alter ego now. Oh, I'm right. sorry, Devin. There you go, there you go. Devin is a college uh, student. <laughs> 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 um, and joining us uh, once again today, we are very blessed to have two uh, co-hosts that are... Um, as talented and intelligent as they are beautiful we have the NAACP media uh, department head and Juneteenth organizer who just announced that Juneteenth is still going this Ooh. year baby yes yes so we have Miss Jay Lee hey. who did a fantastic job yesterday at the protest thank you for, oh, for doing great. that Amazing. awesome and we have the uber beautiful uber entrepreneur who's doing a thousand things uh just did a radio interview um jazz i don't know all the stuff you be doing you just nah, you shut up. So I it. Like, <laughs> thank a, you guys it was the we battle radio i did um i do a few things jc i'm modeling out here talks T talks it was just later on the night shea butter got you the kiss by shay she has her own product she has her <laughs> own talk show she has her own modeling agency she's a model uh she's a host just uh, my goodness but thank you for being here once again thank um, you we, for having we had me. a very very good reception from the last episode uh and this episode is gonna be um just as special i, I don't want to say even more because uh, that talk we had was very powerful and a lot of people yeah, been hitting me up about it uh a lot of people been hitting me up about it but this episode is gonna be just as special because we have a uh, a special uh, guest that a lot we, of people um, still have to bring into the show here in a little bit, but we will be speaking with Mayor Chaz Motor, yes. the mayor of Columbia of Murray County of Tennessee, will be on the show with us. Uh, we're gonna do a a little you know a little informal talk. You know how we do here on the show, right? Um, but with everything going on in the nation and with it being an election year and with uh. The COVID, there's just a lot of questions that the people in the community have that we have, and we just he's been very uh kind, and um, we are privileged to have him. He's gonna sit down with us, and we're gonna talk for about an hour or so, and and just pick his mind, see, see what you know what his background is, is how he got to where he is, and you know, we we got a lot of questions, so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned because. We have got um, messages from you guys and the calls from you guys and all that. And if you have any questions, as always, please type into the comments. If you have any uh, comments yourself, please um, comment. Let us know. Give but us uh, but we about to hey hey we, we about to <laughs> hey. bring him in here in a little bit. And um, is he already on? Can I, I see? Don't know. Him? Chaz, can you hear us? Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> hey, give us uh, I didn't know a what thumbs like. up if you can hear us, Chaz. Young Thunder. No, well, he just took his headphones out. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So he's he's trying to fix something. All right. But in the meantime, while we're working on on getting Mr. Motor, well, Mayor Motor on the uh, on on the screen with us and everything. We want to thank everybody that came out to the protest yesterday. Yes, yes, can, yes, yes. Can you, Chaz, if you can hear us, give me a thumbs up. Let me. Okay, he can hear Yay. us. We cannot hear him. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Does your microphone have a cross a, a, across it? Because it, you could be muted. trying to figure it out but yes but while y'all work on it thank everybody for coming out to the protest it was a very beautiful it was a peaceful protest started at the square made its way down to the river walk 
It was about 200 plus out there, which was a a pleasant and beautiful surprise. Yeah, very um, diverse crowd. Very diverse. It was it, it it really it really uh made me feel good to see so many people coming in support of uh of the situations happening and and we had some good speakers. Yes. Um I walked around burning sage. There was uh, beautiful signs. We're going to have a, uh, some videos that we post on the Who That page after after the uh this podcast and um actually Mayor Motor had a uh a letter that he sent in because he's out of town right now but he did have uh was it the city manager that, that spoke um can't, his name was Ernie so I'm not really sure yeah. who his position is but, but they were still very beautiful yeah. words um mm-hmm. give me just a second Chaz I'm gonna see hold on Y'all shout out to yeah. Jeremiah Wright Ray yes Tom thank Wilson, you myself we all came together and you know made it happen yeah it really made it happen and mm-hmm. made history really it was so beautiful to see everybody out there with Chaz? their signs can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Got him. We got him. <laughs> I don't know what you did. Man, I'm glad I'm so tech savvy over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna transition you in here, okay? All right. All right. All right. Now, Chaz, uh, with the setup, you'll see. We've got a direct camera for you to see us, but the the audience sees us from a few different camera angles. So. Yeah. But okay. Well, okay. welcome to the show, Mayor here. Motor. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you for being here. How you Thank doing? Uh oh. Do we lose? I'm you? good. I'm How good. I'm uh, just honored to uh, get the invite. Ready to talk a little bit. Okay. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm I'm so glad like that you you responded. That was just a. I was just throwing a hail mary pass. <laughs> and you responded man, quick too. I like I was surprised. <laughs> I'll be on anytime you ask. I promise. All right. Hold them to All right. All right. That's what's up. Well, uh, we, we did announce at the protest yesterday. Uh, and uh, Thank you for sending the, uh, the letter. Very beautiful words of support and everything. Uh, we announced that you will be on the show. And we've had a lot of interested people that um, are going to be tuning in. And, and, and they want to you know, know more about you and, and all that. Uh, the first thing I want to know real quick, though, when is Election Day? Because we, we were talking about voting yesterday, and I, but the national voting and local voting are two different days, right? That's right. That's right. So generally speaking, local elections occur the first Thursday in August. Oh. So um, there are not a whole lot of um, uh, local elections on the ballot coming up uh, this August. However, there are some important ones, including the school board. Um, and uh, a couple other uh, state legislative races have primaries. Uh, but then the, the state general and federal general election always occurs the first Tuesday in November. Um, so there's still time to register to vote for uh, the November election. In fact, I think there may even be still time to register to vote in time for the August election. Awesome. Uh, certainly the, the November election being the big one because that will be the, the presidential election. Uh, as well as some of the other uh, federal and state uh, legislative races. All right, thank you, thank you. So, I, cause I, I didn't know. I, I, I admittedly would say I've never voted before, so I'm trying to get more into the political process myself. There's just a few things I still gotta learn and figure out. Thank you, Marco. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta learn and figure out. Uh, um, real quick, what do you think about the the protests? That you, you were you able to see any video footage of, of, of the turnout? I was, and in fact, I, I basically watched the whole thing. Uh, fortunately, uh, social media, uh, you know, while there are a lot of negative things about social media that we could all talk about, uh, some of the positive things are is it allows you to tune in and, and, and see what was happening. I'm, I'm out of town right now. My, my wife and two of my three kids uh, have birthdays coming up in a couple of days, all within a span uh, of about three days. Which coming about to go home. broke. Right. Uh, wish I could have been uh, at home. Uh, I wish I could have been home, but uh, you know we we do this every year, and so um, but to watch it honestly, I mean, I will say this: uh, if there's one word that I could you know just spit out, it would be inspired, um, because you know we were all sort of wondering about the turnout. I felt like all along it was going to be a large turnout. Uh, I thought there'd probably be you know at least 200, maybe closer to three. Uh, everything that, that we've heard in our official count is at least 400, probably a little wow. bit more. Wow. Uh, and yeah. and so, uh-huh. and, and from what I understand, it was um, inspirational for everybody who attended. Oh, yeah. It was peaceful. Uh, there were, uh, everyone uh, was there in unity. 
uh, mm-hmm. for community. And, uh, you know, like I said, it just inspires me. It makes me want to get back to town to get to work so that we don't just have conversations and we don't just let this momentum pass yet again. But instead, we start having some some really meaningful results because that's, I think, what people are looking for. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Meaningful results. What yeah. do you think is going to be step one for that meaningful result? Well, you know, it's funny. Some of my some of my uh, high school friends in Chloe and I, we used to have this saying in Central: "Let's don't talk about it. Let's be about it." Right. right. And uh, right. it's it's easy to talk, and I know you've probably all said that before, but it's easy mm-hmm. to talk. Uh, but really, your talk has to be backed up with actions. And so uh, there are a few things that, that, that I have in mind. One thing that I want to make sure everyone that's listening knows about is there's a group that was actually formed about five years ago, just after the Charleston shootings, uh, the horrific uh, incident in, in Charleston that was just a really sad day for, for our entire country. And a group in Columbia got together. They call themselves the Stand Together Fellowship Group. Uh, it's it's made up of clergy, uh, African American and and uh, white. Uh, it's made up of community leaders. Yeah. It's made up of stakeholders. It's made up of, of people who care. And they have been meeting regularly for the last five years, and they've really set a, a foundation for some some things that can be done to start having some progress in the short term. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from my perspective, I'm 36 years old, and so. Um, you know, I feel like I'm representing a little bit of a different generation in elected yes. office, and uh, yes. we're bringing some new perspectives. Good. And I think that when you combine a new generation of leadership in this country uh, that starts locally, when you combine the Stand Together Fellowship Group, when you combine the amount of just people who were there yesterday in downtown Columbia to start a conversation, yes. and then frankly, when you include our history in Columbia, which is not great when it comes to race relations, no. uh, we we have the ability to learn from that history. Those who repeat, you know, history are are, are doomed for failure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can learn from that history. We've got the right people in place. And like I said, I'm just inspired and, and ready to get to work because I think Columbia is going to be a community that if we do what I think we can do, we'll be looked to as a trailblazer in this country. Yeah. I like that. Yes, I'm glad you're excited about it too because I think that's what we look for is our leaders who feel what we feel, you know, and want to do something to make a difference. So, um, yeah. I do want to ask because you, you mentioned 36 and, yeah. I, and I have this conversation sometimes because I have a theory that the generation that was raised by Eminem and South Park are going to be different. <laughs> um, so, what have you found, like, while being being in office, to like the difference uh, in your perspective based on your age? You know, based on those those new ideas. What's how? What what things have you found is is a difference from the past and, and now? Well, you know? I, I think first of all, I mean, the further away we. Get, Get from you know some of the darker periods of our country with regard to race relations. Uh, if you look, look back to the civil rights era, uh, back to the to the fifties and sixties, um, you know I, I, I didn't know that. You know my, my parents barely knew that. Uh, I was born in nineteen eighty three. Uh, you know I went to McDowell Elementary School, oh, wow. school with Thorn Central. I mean um, my my first you know hero and still my hero to this day it happens to be the man who's been featured on the last dance for the last few Sundays uh, <laughs> that I'm sad is now over because I'd watch uh, however much of that footage they put out. And so I just think that we we just represent a, a new sort of fresh approach and um, we know that, that racism still exists in this country and we hear it and we see it um, but I think it's further removed from the generations that we make up uh, that are on this, this podcast right now um, and so I think maybe that's why I have a little bit of a different perspective again being 36 years old um, have young children uh, who are seeing these things play out and who are asking me these very poignant, detailed questions about what's going on. Um, and so it's causing me to be very deliberate about those conversations. I want my children to to know what's going on. I don't want to hide it from them because right. I want them to know what's wrong and what's right. Yeah, right. And so I think not only do I have a different perspective, I'm also raising my children in a different perspective that hopefully each generation is getting better and better. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I remember last week one of our biggest things was um, and I really like how you said the being proactive and like when you get back so let's let's do some steps let's figure it out and like last week we was talking on different things that we could do other than harping on what's happening how can we be proactive and 
uh, move forward. And I know, I mean, I don't have much, um, I guess say so in the school systems, but when you say you're bringing up kids and like you said, when they go back to school and everything that has happened, they're going to be a little like, because <laughs> everybody's household is different. So they're going to go to school and all those conversations of all those different households are going to come together in one classroom with small children. Um, what do you think would be a good way um, in a vast, like these classrooms, um, to bring a cultural, like we had a couple ideas, like diversity. maybe a, a yeah, cultural diversity. So that way, like how your household, you teaching your children what's right and wrong. But I understand everybody's household isn't like that. But in the school, we have just a little bit more power, I guess, with the teachers. And um, our idea was just to have a culture day where my classroom, if I was a teacher, I'd have Africa. If Jay Lee was a teacher, she'd have Asia. So that way, the kids, um, they don't have a... Because right now, like I said, education is big. And if they're looking at things for what it is, they might have a stereotypical look on what's happening but take it all the way back to the roots for that second to be able to say this is what Africans do this is what Europeans do this is what Asians do and instead of breaking it down into a, a color thing mm. look at it as in a cultural thing and mm. have them be like oh mama it was really cool I learned this by Africa today I know you might not like black people but man this is really cool I like jerk chicken <laughs> 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 you know I, I learned about I went to China today and I I learned that you know they do these dances and this is how they do things so it's just like a way that a lot of adults the cups are full but the children aren't you know and I feel like with the kids that will be for me personally the first step to be able to break the racism thought and to have a kid even if like I said they might not have a parent who feels like that but at least them taking in that day that cultural day was like well this was nice um, how do you feel about that I love that. I think that is awesome. You know, you make a good point. Um, you know, people are not born racist. Uh, people uh, acquire the, the hatred because of their surroundings, because of what they're taught, uh, because of what they know. Mm -hmm. And really, our children are our best bet for the future of this country. Um, they are the ones that, you know, if we broaden their horizons and let them understand what's right and what's equal and what's justice, then they're going to know. And then the more that they know, the more they're going to pass it on, just like what my wife and I are trying to do and those who are out there who have children. Uh, so I, I love that idea because, again, the school system for me, in my view, that is the most important thing that we can do to to change conversations, to change the inequality, to change the the wealth and poor divide. Really, yes. so many of our solutions lie in our education system, and that's why I'm such a strong supporter of public education. And you made a good point. You know, the city mayor for the city of Columbia doesn't have a real strong. Uh, say in the education system because it's a county education system mm -hmm. and basically the county school board governs it. However, the city of Columbia, by a long shot, contributes the, the largest population of our school district. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, represent the largest population of teachers in the school district by a long shot. And so we certainly have a voice in that, which is why I'm very vocal on public education, which is why I, I go to schools. Uh, anytime I'm invited, I, I'm there, whether it's reading a book to a first grade class or speaking to the high school seniors at Central who are about to graduate, um, I do anything I can to get involved locally in the schools because I think really that's where we can start to see real results. Okay. I have um, I have a couple couple questions for you with that being said. I understand, you know, as a politician, you guys have red tape and, you know, there, your process to get things achieved may be a little bit longer than what people actually realize. So what can we do as citizens, as people, where we don't have to jump through the red tape to get things done and assist that goal? Well... You are making a very good point because uh, one of the biggest frustrations, quite frankly, I'm a, I've been in office a little bit over a year, is just the the slowness of government. Um, you know, and that, <laughs> right. that's recognizing how slow federal government is and how slow state government is and, frankly, how slow we are locally. It just requires a little bit more red tape than what I like. Um, uh, and, and that's why I believe that the, the public uh, at large are the ones that have the ability to truly make change. 
what you saw yesterday in downtown Columbia, 400 people. I mean, we're a community that has 40,000 people population, maybe, about that. 400 people were downtown on a summer Saturday when it was apparently about 95 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so, you know, that when people picked up their Daily Herald this morning or when people put on, on their social media page and saw all the crowd, the black, white, everything else that was there, their friends, some of the people they didn't know. I mean, that shows those people that change is a front in Columbia. And so what you didn't realize, if you were there yesterday, and particularly the organizers who, who need a shout out, who I spoke with over the last week and who did a great job, is that you know they started something yesterday that is going to continue to make shockwaves through uh, uh, coming you know the next several weeks ahead. Um, but to, to more directly answer your question, so I don't sound like a politician, uh, <laughs> Vice Mayor, uh, y'all may know Vice Mayor Krista Martin and I, yeah, Krista, a friend of mine, I've known Krista for a long time, and I know she shares this vision, um, and by the way, heard her remarks yesterday um, at, uh, at, the, the, at the rally, and there's no way I could ever compete with, with her oratory skills and, and her substance of what she said. <laughs> Uh, we were getting chill bumps as we were listening to it. But I think that, that when you have people in office who want to see change um, and who are interested in getting results and not worried about the political consequences, um, that is where you have sort of the ingredients for success. And, and let me also say this. If you want to get something changed in the city of Columbia or in Murray County or really in any governmental capacity, all you got to do is show up. Um, show up and, and make your voice heard. And that is truly one of the things that I've learned the most since I've been mayor is those who show up to city council meetings generally get what they ask for. Uh, it's those who, who decide not to show up uh, that are the ones that are left disappointed. So right, right. Uh, when, I think that's one way to handle it. Yeah, and when do you have, like, host those council meetings, and how does the public, how are the public uh, informed about those meetings? So one thing Vice Mayor Martin and I set forth uh, earlier last year is we wanted to make just more transparency uh, for city government. And so actually now our city council meetings, which are held on the second Thursday of every month, are now broadcast live on YouTube. So you can go to the City of Columbia Facebook page, like the page, and every Thursday night, or I'm sorry, the second Thursday night at 530, broadcast live. And so that's one way to do it. It used to be you had to actually... Uh, but you can also show up to City Hall. We have study sessions the first Thursday, uh, and then City Council meetings the second Thursday. And then the thing about me, and I know the Vice Mayor is the same way, all you got to do is call us or email us, text us, and uh, you're going to hear back from us. And that's, again, ways to be engaged with your City Council, or that's really how you start to see reform. I like that. Okay. Right. Now, we'll we speak on education for a minute. And uh, we've been. Um, me and Brandon and a few people here involved with the Who That Podcast, we have been talking about trying to get, and not just educating the children, but maybe getting some sort of adult education programs in place for for life skills Our and stuff skills. like that. We need to facilitate that. I think if we can get our adults, because adults always pass information down to their children. you yes. know. Yes. So I want to try and get together and put in place some adult education programs maybe some mentor for jobs and and trade skills and financial literacy and things like that you know do you think do you think that would be a highly effective method of or do we already have I mean, something I, I, like that? I think you need to go ahead and get on the payroll and start promoting that now i mean that you just hit every <laughs> point that, that all of those things you know your education doesn't stop when you graduate high school uh, you know, I'm still learning today, uh, you know, at 36 years old, and uh, there are plenty more things I have to learn. Um, and so to your question, though, I mean, the, the difficulty is who's going to take the lead there? You know, who's going to step up to the plate? Is it your, you know, is it your um, religious organizations? Certainly they have opportunities to get better invested if they truly want to, to, to live out some of the scripture that we're taught, taught about helping those who can't help themselves or loving your neighbor as yourself. Right. That's where... You could start to, to start, you know, reaching out to do some adult services, um, you know, but just looking at other nonprofits in town, what are they doing? Are they truly serving the actual need? Um, but, but education, again, is the key to success and the key to changing the conversation in this country, whether you're talking K through 12, whether you're talking trade school, whether you're talking higher education or whether you're talking just adult learning.
Right. It you was know, just a second. I apologize. We had a issue with the camera there. <laughs> I was even um. Yeah, while we wait on the camera, so can you, can you still hear us? Or? Hey, Chaz, can you still hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. We cannot see you. So you've been a year in your seat, a young husband with young children. What was the transition like from, you know, growing up here in Columbia to now being the mayor of Columbia? Well, I'll say this, you know, uh, graduating from Central uh, in 2001, so I've already told you my age, but now you really know my age. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, I left for, uh, for undergrad and law school and coming back. Really, I feel like I was pretty well positioned because I've, I'm from Columbia. I know it's people. Uh, you know, I, I'm friends, lifelong friends with, with folks here. But on the other hand, um, you know, I was, I was away enough to have some experiences outside of Columbia that I think made me a better person then come back uh, and sort of try to implement on that. But um, it's been tough at times. You know, I still have a day job as a lawyer. I'm not a full-time mayor. Uh, so trying oh, to have that balance between family oh. and mayor and law has been tough. But I hope we're doing an okay job. But I'll let y'all be the judge on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you can judge yourself, too. I mean, what are you proud about so far, you know, being in your seat? Well, I think I'm proud that I feel like I am representing a larger voice, perhaps, that's ever been represented before. Because, again, I'm, I'm bridging a little bit of a generational gap. I'm from here, so I know, you know, my parents' friends and their generation and even the generation older than them. But I'm also, you know, from here in 36, and so my generation, which is such a strong uh, population, population generation here and then those who are younger so again I feel like the voice that I have is really representative of a large group uh, and so to see that is, is probably been uh, one of my favorite things also again having known Krista Martin since I was a kid playing soccer with her son uh, and getting to work with her and our city council which is very united uh, and shares the common vision uh, has also been a, a, a good thing. Obviously, we had a lot of momentum coming into this year that has been put on hold as a result of COVID-19, mm -hmm. which we're starting to see some some progress and getting further along from that. But we still understand that it's you know very real here in Columbia and Murray County, and we still have to be very mindful of that. Um, but I really believe that Columbia is well positioned to pick right back up where we left off pre-COVID and begin that momentum, but also build on it. I mean, this 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 situation that we currently have, which unfortunately took George Floyd and a couple other incidents to get it started back, this conversation, mm -hmm. we really weren't having a conversation on race relations in Columbia prior to this. And so now we're going to claw back from COVID-19 and continue that momentum but also continue momentum to make sure that we're working for a Columbia that benefits all of us, not just some of us. Right. So l let me ask you, we're, we're talking about race relations, and, you know, I'm not trying to throw you a curveball here, but with the Confederate Museum opening up here, I mean, there's still, right now they're tearing down Confederate statues all over the country, and we just opened up a Confederate Museum here with a lot of those statues well, yeah and you know how i mean how do we handle that you know and i'm not trying to put you in a bind here i'm just just keeping it real no you're you're not putting me in a bind at all I, uh i didn't come on the show to have censored questions so good, good deal uh, <laughs> let, let me say this when i earlier just a few minutes ago when we were talking about sort of why i'm so optimistic about columbia i talked about the fact that we have a you know um a a large group of people that seem to be united in the cause uh, we have the what I believe to be the right leadership uh, currently. You know, you have a very uh, young and uh, new generational speaking mayor. You have a vice mayor who's been here for a while who understands the situation. You have a united city council. You have a bad history uh, regarding race relations or a history that's not really one to be proud of with some of the race riots and lynchings that we know about. Uh, and again, I think that historical perspective well positions us to be better than, than that. But I believe that the, the Confederate Museum also provides an opportunity for us to show uh, that, that Columbia has a whole lot more going forward and that we have a whole lot better vision uh, going forward in the future. And, you know, a museum is something I've, I've always thought that, that those uh, busts at the Capitol and the state Capitol and, and, and things of that nature belong in a museum. Uh, they don't belong in the state Capitol. Right. And uh, so now to 
for there to be a museum that's in the city of Columbia, um, you know, obviously that's that's their right. It's not something that really uh, I would have chosen for the city of Columbia, but it's here. But in my perspective, I'm not really interested in focusing on the negatives. I'm interested in figuring out how to turn that negative a positive. And if that museum um, can help us figure out to turn that conversation into a positive, then, you know, from my perspective, that's what I want to do. Right, to turn um, the lemons but, into you know, lemonade. Right. And I mean, look, at the end of the day, let's let's figure out a way to have our own museum. I mean, I think there's some opportunities in the city of Columbia uh, to have a uh, civil rights museum that highlights uh, the bad history and those things, but also that shows what the city of Columbia is doing uh, to erase that and to, to, again, be a trailblazer in this conversation. I mean, Columbia, there's no reason that the city of Columbia cannot be looked at in the next six months, 12 months or beyond mm -hmm. and say, man, that community got it. That community understood mm -hmm. what the conversation was and how to see real action and real reform. One thing I will also say though, I don't know the answers. Um, what I do know is that I know that there are people out there that know how to get to that answer. And so I think that you know, if you have somebody that just thinks that they know the answer and they have the solution, that's probably not the right approach. Right. But just to right. make sure that you bring in the most amount of people, and you know, y'all, your group right now, I guarantee you that there are some conversations. If we could have a huge, you know, conference call, everybody's talking. I mean, we could probably come up with three or four, you know, items on a task list to, to check off going forward that would have a positive outcome. Yes. Well, I like um, what you think because we have those items on the task list. <laughs> <laughs> we did that last well, week. <laughs> you know what? You know how to find me. So, I mean, again, and that's going to be what it takes. I mean, it, you said it jokingly, but seriously, until we can show that we've checked some things off the list, then it's just going to be another, oh, well, we had a conversation and we had thoughts and prayers mm -hmm. for the family and, you know, there's nothing to back that up on. And, I, you know, I'm just not interested in, in, in talking some game. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in right. being able to look back and say, man, we did something special in Columbia. And, you know, if right. not now, then when? I like how when Vernon said he reached out to you, reached back to him with the quickness. Uh, with everything going on today, I've, and, I, and I say it repeatedly, the only reason why the things have gotten so violent is because we're trying to get someone to listen. Our voices have gone so unheard but with after last week's conversation we was like well let's just focus on the community so when these things happen in the community um how open is your door um i know a lot of people like and with your position just so happened we talked to a lot of different people of authority and of higher status so the conversations are a little bit easier but a lot of people will see you mr Mulder, and be like i don't even know how to say hello so something might have happened bad to one of their cousins or their uncles and they just like I want justice for this or I need somebody to talk to who's older than me who can actually get something done but how can I actually sit down and talk to them other than maybe Facebook like Brandon found you I don't know how Brandon found you but you know Facebook. how open is the door to be able to have a conversation with you well you know again my door um, is not cracked um, it's not slightly <laughs> open, but it is pretty wide open. And, um, you know, hopefully my actions speak louder than my words. Again, I recognize it's easy for me to sit here on a computer screen and tell you all my door's always open. Uh, don't let me just say that. Why don't you force me to prove it? And I'm pretty sure I'll prove it. Um, you know, obviously I wish, well, I wish that I could, uh, I wish I could, you know, answer every email within a few minutes of getting it. I'm not as quick on that as I'd like to, okay. but generally speaking, if you send me some form of message through some sort of social media platform or email or call, you're going to hear back from me. And whether or not it's hearing back in a way like this on a mm -hmm. computer screen or seeing you at City Hall, um, you know, my door is, is always going to be open. And, okay. and again, all I can really say is let me prove it to you uh, if you don't believe me. Um, but I, I do think, too, in addition to my door being open, we've got to find ways at the city of Columbia to be more proactive. Yeah. In other words, you know, I like what's going on. I like what I'm hearing. I like the organization, but those are things we're sort of reacting to, you know, right. mm -hmm. um, I reacted to the fact that there was a protest going on on Saturday and I couldn't be there and, you know, and, and it is what it is, but why not be a little proactive on something? Maybe there's some things that we can do, some initiatives that we can take, uh, that allows us to be the ones to sort of come to your door instead of you worrying about my door being open Let me see if your door is gonna be open. So when I come to ask you to do something, are you gonna do it? That sort of cuts both ways yeah. um, 
for example, y'all mentioned knowing when to vote. Let me just tell you, yeah. you got to be voting. Uh, if you expect my door to be open when you call me, then I'm going to be expecting <laughs> you to be casting your vote at the ballot box, right. okay? That's an example where you're exercising some civic responsibility uh, that I'm going to ask you if you're doing that when you're coming to me and asking me to do something. So um, oh, really? there you go. There's a challenge right there. I like that. <laughs> I came up with that like that. We're going to make sure next time I talk to you, I want to make sure you've registered to vote. But But seriously, you know, I do think, I take it for granted that, that people might think that I might, you know, turn the other way or something, but that's just not me. So uh, if you see me out on the street, uh, I had my first, uh, by the way, I had my first quarantine, post-quarantine haircut from, uh, from T the Barber last week. Yeah, day. we saw that. We saw that. We saw we that. Saw that. Uh, it's already, it looks like it already needs to be cut again. I have to tell T he didn't cut it short enough, but, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, I, I just hope you know, my prayer in life is that if somebody sees me on the street and wants to tell me something, that they're not going to walk the other way out of fear they're not going to get a response because they'd be very wrong if that was their assumption. Yeah, I, I ran into your Red 7 pizza one time, and I was you had your family. I was like, you know what? He's doing the family thing. I'm going to keep on step <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, I, I will say on that, it's enter at your own risk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If you're going to disrupt the three-year-old, I'm going to send her home with you. Okay. Um, you had taken care of my friend. I, I tell people, I remember when you was going up for the mayor position, and I, I tell everybody this. I was like, I don't know the man from Adam and Eve, but you had taken care of one of my friends that at a um, high school reunion, and I'll just never forget the kindness because he's autistic. Uh, he has a high autistic Asperger's. I was on the other side of the um, field, honestly. He doesn't really like me to be too close, but, you know, I was just there to chaperone. And I just remember it was a group, and it was you and your wife, and it was a group of people. And he was so excited about this event. And he was there, and he was talking. And all of a sudden, everybody just kind of slowly started to turn away. And you were talking, too. Um, and the moment I was going to have to go and go and, I guess, grab my friend and get him out of that hot moment, out of that embarrassing moment, because all of a sudden everybody was just turning their head. You turned around, you tapped my friend on the shoulder. And I don't know what you said, because, again, I'm on the other side of the field. So I just saw his face go from really solemn, like, because he was so excited about this day to almost like, forget this day, I'm ready to go home, to, all right, all right, I'm back having a good time. So that's the first time I ever saw you, met you, and it just... I was like, I don't, of course I don't vote because I'm in the hot seat. But if I was, I was like, vote for that man. Because obviously from across the room, he's a good guy. <laughs> so that's what I remember. I don't know if you remember my friend or that moment, but that took care of my friend for like ever. He still, that was a highlight of his day. I can't say his name because of, you know, but that was a highlight for him. I know exactly who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I absolutely remember meeting you that night, and I appreciate you saying that. You're welcome. Okay. Well, I did want to go back to um, the Confederate Museum because I had questions on, like, is that something that is funded through Columbia? I know you said it's not something that you didn't really want here or to see. Yeah, you know, and that that's the, you know, frustrating or one of the frustrating parts about that conversation is that, you know, people say, well, why did y'all even let it here, yeah, let it come here? that was my question. Uh, and and basically the answer is is that, that that museum is on private property. It's privately funded. Um, no funding whatsoever from the city of Columbia. Okay. And uh, they, you know, there's nothing that a government can do to to, to forbid them from from moving forward on that. I mean, yeah. uh, if if the city of Columbia, which is you know was approved several years ago, um, but if the city of Columbia were to have denied it. Uh, then you know, you're talking a lawsuit, and a judge would would basically overrule the city. So, yeah. and you know, again, you know, I, I went to a stand together fellowship meeting, and we were having a conversation about this museum, and it, it it is obviously one that continues to bring out emotions in ways that I will never understand, um, and so it almost feels a little bit naive for me to even say let's turn that negative into a positive because I fully get it it's not that easy no, it's not. Uh, and so on the other hand um, you know again to me it allows us an opportunity to use that as sort of our you know uh, competitive edge or competitive spirit to be like all right if they're gonna come in our town then instead of them telling the narrative we're gonna tell the narrative yeah. by doing the things that we're doing so when people come to visit that museum 
you know, they're going to see about all the things that the city of Columbia is doing uh, to progress forward. You know, mm -hmm. so there's an opportunity for us. And I would rather see it in the museum versus like on the streets. So I guess that's something a way to yeah, look at it. You know? fun way. Um, I have a question because what you just said was was uh, a powerful statement um, about. If they're gonna do that, then let them do their thing. Uh, it's private property, and we everybody has has constitutional rights, and you're supposed to you know respect those rights. So they can do their thing. It's it's cool. It's not like we're not used to this type of stuff. But with um with you speaking about the the city of Columbia putting on a different face, putting on a face and showing that yeah we're doing this over here also. That if there are initiatives that are already um positive for the community that already uh, have happened from just the initiative of citizens and also like with the rally how it, uh, I got the art Paco so <laughs> let me raise my mic for you sir but um, uh, if there's things that are, that are already happening that are already good for the community how easy is it then for the city to to sponsor to back to promote to support things that have already happened regardless of if city hall knew about it or not like if how how easy is it to to start a a support for things like that? Well, I mean, any any type of cultural diversity, you know, initiative or education event, uh, it's going to receive support from the city of Columbia because it's going to have the support of me and from the vice mayor and from members of council. Uh, so there's there's your first of all support, and then you know, in terms of organizing, I mean, any time there's a group that has an event in mind that it wants to put on or promote or, or wants the assistance of the city, we're always going to be willing to have that conversation. Well, with that being said, and that, that's, that's very good to hear, uh, yeah, Jay Lee here is an organizer. Uh, she helped organize the rally uh, yesterday, but she also is organizer of the annual Juneteenth celebration. I don't know if you know about Juneteenth, but we do. I know all about it. Awesome. Right. Yeah. And I've already got it on my calendar, but it gives me a good opportunity to promote that, that same day. You may already know this. Uh, we're actually dedicating a, a marker out at Fairview Park uh, sure. that talks about the historical significance of Fairview Park and how it came to be uh, over uh, over there. And so, anyway, uh, that's yeah. that's the same day as Juneteenth, and so the City of Columbia is already going to be supporting and promoting that day. Uh, heavily already, so I'd love to figure out opportunities yeah. to sort of do some cross promotion. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's my part. Just yes. let me know. Would that be a way to uh, in the future? Because when it comes to, uh, and, and I love cultural diversity and bringing the community together for positivity and all that, but I also like things that make money. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Juneteenth is set up like vendors that uh, you know have their business license and and they can come out and you you know they just have their own things to sell. So people are able to connect in the community and get more uh, information about history, but also get their own product out there, get their own brand out there. Right. there. So it's, it's one of those things to where it is very positive and it's already happening. I think this year's the fourth anniversary. Yeah, it's the fourth anniversary. So going into the future when it comes to uh, Columbia being open for business, as you said once before, is that something that on the fifth or the sixth or the seventh that the city can stand behind and like maybe they do meal day and be able to promote and bring tourism dollars in for all these hotels that we just put up and all that? Absolutely. Cool. Uh, we have a. That like, do we just walk up to you and say, hey, this is what we need? This is the well, blueprint? I mean, you could do that. And then if you do that, I would uh, take it in stride and get you to the right person. Okay. Um, but we have actually a tourism and marketing director in Columbia that this oh, is 95% of what she does is exactly what you just said in terms of the kind of support that's needed. Awesome. Uh, that's and you're right. Uh, the city promotes a lot of events throughout the year, including Mule Day. Um, there's also First Fridays that goes on. Yeah, which and is we, really successful. It is. It, which it is. is. But, but that has the city footprint on it. And the point is, is if that has the city footprint on it, then there's no question that the events that you're talking about uh, also needs to and deserves and should have the city footprint on it as well. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. I would, I would just tell you to reach out to the tourism director. Uh, and marketing director, her information's on the website. She has her own link on the page. Okay. Um, and it, I guarantee you that you will find a very receptive uh, uh, audience and, and, and being able to put some of our resources behind that, even if it's just promoting, even if it's just people that follow our pages that see that we're promoting that kind of event. Yes. Again, we're not going to make changes in one failed swoop. It's not going to happen overnight, yes. but piece by piece, brick by brick, baby steps, we will make positive change. And 
that's an example of something easy that can be done uh, yes. with our support. Well, I love to hear that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. It's, it's like, great to hear. There, there are a few uh, initiatives that are already, um, I've been blessed to be a part of a, a few different things in the city that uh, we just take on our own initiative. Me and Jasmine over here, uh, what was that, two years ago, Jazz? Two years ago. Uh, we did a community garden on the east side. Uh, mm -hmm. Did a fire pit. For the love of us. Jay Lee uh, helped us organize it and everything. Um, and on the south side, uh, they have a community garden how what what are the steps to get more things like that like community gardens you know like like i really with this covid and everything you see more people trying to grow in and, and with murray county being a county of uh that comes from farmers that comes from people that you know have to know the uh the uh farmer's almanac that type of thing <laughs> how um how can we improve or get more community gardens to where to where the new generation coming up uh can take up that same heritage of, of providing, doing for self, providing for yourself. Like, can we well, get more of those? I think a lot of it, it goes back to really the power in numbers and the voice and the organization. And if if that is an, a, a cause that you're passionate about, uh, then it is a cause that you get your, your, your self, you know, fellow minded folks around that are passionate about community gardens mm -hmm. and you put some organization to it. And then all of a sudden you've got something that can grow into something special. I mean, you know, the city, uh, going to the point about the city government and frustrations and that sort of thing, we don't have the ability to do everything. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have the ability to say, okay, we're going to make community gardens our number one initiative and then make, you know, uh, more playgrounds our number one initiative or this or that. I mean, there's, there's, there's only so much that we can do, which is why I stress that it's so important. It's the organization and the people that have the ability to, to do those type of things. Um, and so you come to the table with an idea with people behind it, then that's really where you're going to see the kind of results that you're talking about. For example, there was a group in town that thinks that Columbia has a litter problem, that there's too much trash on the roads. And so I told that person, I said, okay, find about seven or eight people that agree with you, and then I'll create a litter task force. And sure enough, we have a litter task force that has about 12 people on it, and they're putting together some initiatives that they want to see the city council pass that they think will help curb the litter problem again yes. that's that's an exhibit a that is a primary example as to how you can get change done in columbia get a group of people that are passionate about an issue bring it to the city and then let us put our stamp behind it and start seeing progress that's that public private partnership mm -hmm. that in my view is so important yes. uh, to yes. meaningful reform in government because again you've got to have the public component in a lot of cases but unless you have that private component private being the people uh, the power is in the people, and that's how you're going to make progress. So, what if, and speaking of the litter thing, what if we smashed two ideas together? Think about this. People love doing these 5K marathons and stuff like that. What if we smash up a 5K marathon or however long, you know, with uh, with a litter pickup, where along the way they do the, you know, I mean, they do the marathon. I think that'd be do, great. You know, and then like That'd we could set cool. stations up so far with just maybe we get the city trucks where we just throw. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, however. I like it. Well, I'm over here smiling because uh, running happens to be my hobby, right. and I don't know how many miles you ran today, but I'm just going to go ahead and say I bet I ran more than you did. Oh, you did. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> not, not to talk or anything. I love, I love to run, and having a 5K for anything would be awesome, plus it promotes healthy lifestyles and healthy living. Yeah. Uh, yes. But I think you, I just got you signed up for this litter task force, so uh -oh. you'll be on the lookout for an email. No, I'm okay with that. So I'm, I am okay. We're both in the hot seat now. Would you now. run also? Would you run in a 5K? Would you join us? Well, absolutely. All right. Well, not just a 5K. Maybe, maybe it's not just a run. But maybe, maybe a, a run. jog. No, no, no. <laughs> just a run where, you know, where, where the, we're also picking up yeah. litter. You know what I mean? We come back and do maybe a 5K for I like a clean community. Yeah, like and we could, we, could, like we could route it through maybe some of the more severe areas. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm I mean, just throwing stuff out there. the issue, but I, I love that idea. Again, uh, you've just self volunteered for the litter task force, but that <laughs> seriously, I mean, that's the kind of thing that you know the ideas, and that that if you bring the ideas to the table, then you start to see you know implementation, and um, that has the ability to bring awareness to the issue, or also bringing some solutions to the issue, and so. 
um, I love that for sure. Any anytime you can make something positive and fun, the community likes that. We, you know, we a lot of people here feel like we don't have a lot to do. So maybe a, maybe a lot of instead of doing a lot of big things, we do. I mean, instead of doing one or two big things a year, we can maybe scale some of these things down and do a lot of little things and space it out more. You know, like like your first Fridays. You know what I mean? Maybe we. You know, they got Thirsty Thursdays and stuff, like that. <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, so. I do want to ask, because there was just an announcement that I saw before we went live, that uh, um, the court ruled that Tennessee must provide absentee ballots to every eligible voter for all elections in 2020 due to the COVID-19. Is that going to be for local also for the August election? Would, would they be yes. provided for that? All right. I just that is to... correct. So if you, it, there's already a law in Tennessee if you're over 60 uh, if you call in, you're able to get an absentee ballot and, and vote by mail. Uh, but the court ruling now allows anybody that wants to vote by mail uh, can just call in and, and request their ballot, and they'll be sent a ballot uh, with an absentee ballot. Now, they have to be registered to vote in order for that to happen. So uh, be be looking for that. But, but yes, it's going to be uh, absentee for this upcoming local August election. And, um, you know, again, I really believe that, that voting is a crucial uh, issue that unless people are going to the polls to vote, then uh, some of these um, protests uh, and, and important causes that we're seeing uh, are not going to be met with solution. And so if you're going to, to protest and to stand up for what mm -hmm. you think's right, then you've also got to be willing to stand up in the voting booth. Uh, because again, it's 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 representation that 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 we've got to have in order to get meaningful uh, change and progress. And so, uh, obviously, voting is a very important cause of mine, and I'm I'm going to fight for for more access to voting as much as I possibly can. Uh, it's hard to believe, but but not that long ago, uh, we were talking about early voting, uh, and there were a group of people that were against early voting. And now, you know, we know early voting has expanded voting; it gr yeah. gives greater access, and it's sort of a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's no question that conversations about how can we increase uh, civic participation need to be had. And I think that falls on our generation. I go back to our generation. Mm -hmm. But generally, those in the 18 to 34-year-old age demographic, which I'm just outside of that, but generally we vote in the least amount, which what does that mean? That means our voice is not heard because our groups are not running for office and not in office. But not only that, if our group is not voting, then they don't really care about pleasing us or, you know, hearing uh, our cry. And so the more that we engage in the civic process, that's really the more uh, that we're going to be able to do for the causes that we're supporting that, that we're all in agreement on tonight. All right. That's I like awesome. that. Now, I know you are big on voting and, you know, um, it's hard. A lot of times we don't know who to vote for. We don't know who the people are that are running. What are some ways that you guys are getting out there and getting, you know, yourselves known to the community outside of, outside of voting, actually? Like, just, like you said, you will come and run with us. Um, I think I've seen people show up to Juneteenth maybe one year when it was voting time. Um, I just want to see more activity and more involvement with our councilmen, with our people who are running for certain seats. Um, what do you think is something good that you guys can do to get more involved with your uh, community? The uh, well, the, the committee yeah. being on, on the YouTube channel is a good step, but please answer so I can cut you off. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, I mean, to your point, um, I think people are are not naive, and those who just show up when it's time for an election, uh, they they stick out a little bit more than those who have been showing up for for years and years prior to and and after an election. Mm -hmm. um, but from my perspective, um, if if I'm in town, uh, which generally I am. And if there's an event going on in the city of Columbia and I get an invitation to and or are, am aware about it, uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, and so in some cases, again, it's more about how well you are promoting an event that you might be having. Right. Uh, because, you know, if I don't know about it, then, then that means you're not doing a very good job promoting it because I'm generally, you know, pretty much uh, hearing about what's happening in, in town. Right. Um, but on the other hand, that cuts both ways. I mean, we've got to be more proactive. You know, what are we doing to get ourselves out there to where you know how to get in touch with me? Yeah. That if you have something. Um, and so it cuts both ways. I think the people have to do a better job of promoting, but also those of us who are in office and who have that enormous responsibility in elected office have to also take some initiatives, not just in an election year, but in every year. Yes. yes. 
Um, can I ask? Uh, cause I, I have a, a seven year old son, one year old son. You have three children. I think everybody here has yeah. kids except Light Skin Sensation. Uh, definitely, definitely in the back. He's yeah. quiet. Say hi. Say hi to Chaz. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but the uh, with the city over the last few years, and and a lot of this has to do with uh with private ownership, but also I just want your thoughts as a parent. Uh, what could we do more for kids' activities? More for uh. Just kid things like the mall. We already know is the mall. Right? It's, it is what it is. But uh, whatever it is, when it comes to outside of the boys and girls club, are there any any ideas or initiatives or just things that you would like to see? We might not be able to get them done right now, but just things that you think would be good for children in the in the city. Well, one thing I will say, and, and unfortunately, I didn't really understand this or know this until I became mayor, which probably means we can do a better job of promoting it. But our parks and recreation department actually has a lot of programs uh, throughout the year, but, but particularly in the summer uh, mm -hmm. for, for youth, uh, whether it be you know, movies at the park or whether it be you know, various wow. camps, uh, you know, athletic sporting sport camps. Uh -huh. um, so there's some things that we're already doing that we could probably do a better job of promoting that would, mm -hmm. would, would be a you know, overnight sensation, so to speak. Uh, but for me, uh, you know, outdoors is important to me. And a lot of our outdoor recreation activities uh, are, are, are good. We have a lot of them, but I think we could do more, whether it be expanding our parks. Uh, I'd love to see better Duck River access to where people could get in and off kayaks in town without having to go right. you know, out in the That'd county or, awesome. or, or 10, 15 miles away. So really recreational opportunities is, is what I like to focus on with, with children, uh, recognizing that there are some important organizations in town, Boys and Girls Club being one that provides some, some mm -hmm. options, but really we could probably be a little bit more diverse in terms of those offerings and also who is offering them. Because to your point, you know, having a, uh, an almost 10-year-old, an almost 7-year-old, and an almost 4-year-old, uh, you know, we're constantly trying to think of ways, okay, what are we doing tonight? What's going on in town? Are we going to go downtown? Or, you know, <laughs> and so that's another positive of having a, a father of three young children in his office is that I'm not just thinking about, you know, myself and, and my generation, but I'm thinking about those that are that are younger, uh, what we can do to sort of, you know, build them up to, to best position them so that when they're old enough to, to make their decision, they're going to be proud of their town or they're going to want to move back to their town. Right. As long as right. the, one or two yes. of those things are present, then I feel like Columbia has has done a success to those young people because I don't necessarily, you know, if you don't want to move back to Columbia, that's fine, but I want you to be proud of the town that you were raised in, and that's right. sort of what we're all working on is to make people proud of our community. Right. I like that. Have you, uh, well, of course, you, you're the mayor, but there has been a, uh, a seemingly like a problem with retention of, of people like of your generation and younger um, here lately, especially, you know, with the tech boom and everything, people trying to go to more major cities where they feel like they, they'll get uh, different opportunities. What, what do you think is a way to retain to retain people and to... The, the people? graduates in particular. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So we're always trying to figure out how to make Columbia a better place to live, work, and raise a family. And those are really the three primary ingredients for not just retention, but also for recruitment because you want a little bit of both. You want to retain yeah. who you have, but you also want to bring some new people in. Yes. And, and I go back to education. Honestly, I think that is probably the primary component of attracting young people because young people who have children, they want to put their children in an education system that, that basically puts them on a trajectory for a positive outcome, whether or not that be trade school or whether or not that be going directly into the workforce or whether or not that be going to college. That's what parents want is they want to see their children have more opportunities than maybe they had. Uh, and that starts with the education system, which is why I'm such a strong uh, proponent for our school system um, and what I you know, want to fight for and advocate for every chance I get. Awesome. awesome. So let me, let me ask you real quick. So, you know, we had touched on like the adult education and things like that. Do you have any advice for us to, uh, for a way for us to facilitate this somewhere? Maybe, maybe any organization we can go through, maybe a government branch to find some sort of, because that's the problem here. A lot of people have a lot of great ideas in Columbia. We have nowhere to facilitate it on the budgets that we have here. Mm -hmm. So what would you give, give to me as advice to, to facilitate something like that? Well, you know, again, I think 
frankly, it's doing what you're doing. I mean, you're talking to the mayor on a Sunday night on a podcast and getting that you know, <laughs> message out there. I mean, I, I, you know, I think that's important. I mean, I'm hearing from y'all. I'm hearing your concerns. I'm hearing your interest. That doesn't just stop when I close this computer screen and, and move about my day. Uh, that's something that sticks with me and is part of my conversation for the week ahead. I mean, um, you know, being able to let the city manager know that, that I was having a conversation with folks who want to see more opportunities for our children and youth in town. So it may seem sort of cliche, but honestly, you're doing it right now. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing is there's there's other opportunities. There's leadership Murray, uh, Murray that the Murray Alliance puts on that, you know, it's you apply for it. It's a class. It's about a 12 week class and you go through it and you're with people who are young, old. Uh, black, white, um, you know, rich, poor, and right. they're in the community wanting to make a difference. And they make friends, and they talk about things, and they do community initiatives, and, you know, there's an opportunity. All you got to do is apply. Now, maybe the question is, is you got to know about in order to apply. Maybe that's mm -hmm. where it comes it comes back to, we got to do a better job of putting that out there well, uh, so uh, that everybody knows about it. Mayor uh, Moore, but, um, me and Paco are both photographers and videographers. We can cut the city some uh, commercials if you need to right. promote what you need. Okay. <laughs> but, but I'm thinking maybe, maybe in about three years we may need to get you all uh, to cut a little campaign commercial. I got you. You're talking to the right one. you talking to the right one. <laughs> I remember that. I yeah, remember that. You got the right one. All right, three, in three years when I slide in, 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 in your inbox, I'm like, hey, I got my camera ready. Yeah. All right. I'll be ready. <laughs> I'm gonna be asking you if you registered to vote though. Right. So we cut <laughs> and uh, we'll do a push. Make sure I signed up. Yeah, we'll do a push. We we've got things in the in the making. You'll see, it's coming. It's coming. We got things in the making. Yeah. So and we're gonna try and better our our community ourselves. Is is there anything that request that you would make to the people that's listening? Anything that you would like to request from us? as the community well i don't know if, it, if it's a request but let me just say two things first of all uh let me just say that I, I truly believe that the city of columbia for the reasons i mentioned because of our dark history and because of, of where we are today with the confederate museum and the conversation that that brings with it because of the organization that we have now that you saw yesterday with 400 people downtown because of the leadership that you now have in, in city elected office with including myself and vice mayor and all of our council members that are united in your cause and in the cause and the very important cause that we have in this country, the conversations being had, and also uh, the Stand Together Fellowship Group that, that has been working and laying a foundation for this moment. All of those things position our community to really be a trailblazer in this conversation and to be the example that is set for our country. Mm -hmm. I believe that. I wouldn't just say it unless I believed it because I recognize anything short of that is going to be a failure. But I believe that in my heart and I am ready and excited uh, to be the leader in that. Number two, the request would be to continue the momentum. Um, there is a lot of momentum right now. You're seeing elected officials across this country that are willing to step up and to start having some conversations that might not be the easiest conversations, but they weren't willing to have those conversations six weeks before today. Yes. They're willing to have them now. Right. And as sure as that momentum is lost, as soon as you quit having these conversations, uh, that's when we're gonna be looking back five years from now thinking, oh, well, there was some opportunity there that was missed. I think that this is an opportunity that is too important to miss at this moment. Yes. And I don't know where our country may be going, Frankly, I don't know where our state may be headed, but I know that in the city of Columbia, we have the opportunity to drive the train and the train to positive progress on all, all things that we've been talking about tonight. And so, um, you know, as I mentioned um, when I made a post earlier today about yesterday's rally, um, I don't know what the future holds, but I know last night in the city of Columbia, the future looked a little bit brighter than it did the day before. Right. And um, I'm excited about tomorrow and about the next day and about the next day after because of this momentum that we have. And I don't want it to stop on my watch. And so I'm just gonna ask you to continue doing what you're doing to pushing me and to pushing all of us on council to not let us become complacent, uh, but to continue to move on in a positive direction. All right, all right, all right. That's, that's really what we need because, uh, and thank you for, for being forthcoming with acknowledging the dark history because uh, you have to acknowledge the history before you speak on the present. And 
and especially you, you can't like move that. forward until you know where you come from. And exactly. um, you know, I had an opportunity to go down to Alabama last year with the Standing Together Fellowship Group. Um, Vice Mayor Martin was with me on the trip, along with many others. And uh, one of the biggest, and I, this will probably be one of the best things in my life, not just during my four years of mayor, but, but forever, was walking across the Selma Bridge mm-hmm. hand in hand and with Vice Mayor Krista Martin. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is something I will never forget. Um, and, and so to educate yourselves on that part of the history and then to recognize as a group that some of that, a lot of that was occurring in our own town um, is something that was very eye-opening for me. And it, it, it helped me understand the look. Unless we can acknowledge what happened and are willing to have conversations and, and learn from that, then we're doomed to repeat that history. And so I think it's important that you talk about it, even though it might not be easy to always talk about. Okay. Okay. you got to be a little uncomfortable sometimes to get right. some results. That means growth, yeah. Um, well, I, I do want to say before we wrap up that uh, the Who That podcast, we've been, we've been doing this for about 10 months now. Right. Uh, uh, blessing from the Most High. And last year we sponsored an event called Shut Up and Ink. I don't know if you have any tattoos, but it was a great turnout. And I just want to invite you to come out to the next one that we're going to do this year. Uh, if you have some tattoos, you'll, you'll fit right in. If you don't, it's all right. Top <laughs> if you want year. one, yeah, let us know. Uh, I want a tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, if, if my wife and three kids allow it, then, you know. But <laughs> I got a couple of things I have to answer to. But regardless, I'll be there. Shoot me an invitation, and I'll, and I'll be there. Yeah, the, the date's tentative right now due to COVID. <laughs> we had a date and had to change I'll it. I'll tell you, so. the closest thing to a tattoo I ever had, and, and my wife still makes fun of me to this day, when I was a kid, I told you all who my hero was. Um, I had in the back of my hair, I uh, carved in 23, and I would color it in with a red marker, so oh, I had a red wow. 23. Wow. <laughs> that's about, that's that's the closest thing to a tattoo I ever had. That's, yeah. wow. that's, that's pretty wild. dope. That's pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Devin, he's the greatest of all time. So, yes, say that one more time for Devin in the back. Say that one more he's time. He's our sports oh, analyst. Dude. I hope he's not trying to say LeBron is better because uh, I mean, what no, are you sir, no, sir. We uh, we definitely compare uh, Kobe Bryant to mm-hmm. Michael Jordan. I'm being one of the greatest of all time. Well, I will say though. this. I will say this. I would put I would put Kobe at number two. But like Jordan even said, and actually like Kobe Bryant said. There would be no Kobe Bryant without Michael Jordan because oh, Kobe really? mocked his game after Michael Jordan. Speak them facts. So <laughs> See, that's true, but I'm gonna tell you what. My favorite, tell you what. Hold on, no, hold on. My, my favorite player of all time is Isaiah Thomas. And uh, after sitting up and watching what he had to say about Isaiah Thomas, he lost respect for me. My thing is it's like if there was no Detroit bad boys, there would be no Michael Jordan. <laughs> No, yeah, hey, an answer, yeah. player of all time is Isaiah Thomas. I don't think we can be friends, brother. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Sorry, brother. That, that I, I, I don't really mess with Jordan like that. I, I, I young, man. Yeah, he, young. he don't know no better. Right. He don't yeah. know yeah. All right. Well. Young. Well, yeah. just- He's a 99, baby. He's, hey, he's I'm going to come on here. You let me know when your show is, and we're going to talk Michael Jordan all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for that conversation. I'm real sad on that one. So what are some tips you can give somebody who's trying to get to where you are right now? Like the youth, um, anybody? Yeah, somebody yeah, else popular would be a councilman. Uh, yeah, they want me to run for councilman. for that? So first of all, you've got to know. Uh, you, you've got to know what elections are. you got to, you know, be... You got to be registered to vote. You got to be a voter. I am. Uh, I those do are the easy things. I do. Okay. Vote. So that that's the easy stuff. Uh, you've also, you know, to your point about just showing up during election time, uh, you've got to start now. Uh, it may be two years before you're ready to run for something. It may be four years. Uh, but the foundation that you lay now of showing people that you care and establishing relationships and friendships, so that when you do decide to run for office, uh, you'll already have a network. That's also very important, uh, you know. But again, when you show up, people take notice, um, and also know that a, that a good reputation follows you everywhere you go. But a rap, a bad reputation will show up before you get there. Right. And so, you know, doing things that you would want to see your, you know, elected officials do, uh, and not doing those things that you feel like your elected officials should not be doing. And so, um, I, you know, 
Um, very passionate about this issue too, about more people wanting to run for office and could talk about this, you know, all day. But whether or not you're an 18 year old that's just started the workforce and ready to start voting and want to run for office, or whether or not you're 60 years old, I think there's always a place for people to run for elected office. But uh, there's, it's, it's, you know, the time to start was yesterday uh, right. to start kind of laying your foundation and creating your friendships because we definitely need more good people running for office for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. Well, I want to thank you very much for uh, giving us this time, especially on a, a Sunday afternoon uh, and you being out of town. We appreciate you sitting down with us uh, and, and understanding and recognizing the moment that we're in and, and knowing that people need to hear your voice, get some information, get, get a little bit of uh, clarity on things, to, especially locally, you know, that affects us. Uh, Anybody want to say anything else real quick? Because yes, I do have I, one more thing. But, I'm just uh, thankful for information, uh, how to get more involved with promoting the events and you know, getting connected with you personally. So we really appreciate you. Yeah, I just want to say thanks for being here. I'm <laughs> happy that you came. <laughs> All right. um, I'm going to try and get in touch with you and, and try and meet with you maybe once a month. Can I get that commitment? Can I meet with you once a month? Yeah, actually, what I was going to say, um, my email address is just my name at ColumbiaTN.com. So, Chaz.Mulder at ColumbiaTN.com. And I'd appreciate, uh, you know, if y'all put that put the podcast out or whatever, uh, feel free to promote that email address. Again, it's Chaz.Mulder uh, at ColumbiaTN.com. Um, and would, would, you know, again, I, I answer any email or return any call. And in terms of meeting regularly, uh, would obviously be more than happy to do that. So let's get it set up. But email is the best way to sort of establish the contact, and then we'll go from there. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Chaz, I totally appreciate you coming on. I, you know, I had um, I had kind of peeped your swag. <laughs> I knew you. I knew you were night, night school open and um, trend. What's what's the word? Transparent. Transparent. Yes person so I, I was I was very uh, excited about having you on and um, I want to thank you for giving the time and I think the community appreciates that also you know um, is there anything you want to lead out with before we end the podcast I know we have one more question hey I tell you what I am going to do though I want to take a photo so uh, I can promote on my end what I've been doing on Sunday night so y'all want y'all to wave <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> camera's over here camera's over here right, over here guys <laughs> Life's getting persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Isaiah Thomas in the background. All right, cool. Cool. <laughs> um, well, before we, we, we leave off, I just ha I have to mention this because my heart won't sit right with me if I don't. Uh, last year, uh, uh, Trevor Armstrong was murdered, and it's still an unsolved case. And I don't know what proper channels to go through. I don't know exactly who to call, but I have the mayor sitting in front of me, so I'm just going to do it. Uh, this was a very precious and special person to the community. Uh, his last name is Armstrong, so you know that they're related to three-fourths of the state. Uh, but, um, but he was a very, a very sweet and nice young man who, who meant a lot to a lot of people. And his, his murder was a tragedy, it was it's, uh, but it's, it's unsolved. And a lot of his family members are my friends, and they they don't have answers, let alone justice. So I just wanted to put that out. I don't know who you can talk to about it. I don't I don't know about the hierarchy of things like that, but um, I think that his case deserves a, a, a look. So I just wanted to say that. I'm I'm not familiar with it, but I wrote the name down, and uh, let me see what I can find out. That's, that's all I needed, man. I thank, thank you, man. Thank you. Hey, can hey, we get oh, listeners? Can we get the hearts for for Jack? Yes, Take love. Loves. Come on, yeah, guys. Yeah, so we click the hearts here, yo. <laughs> Show them the love. <laughs> all right. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll be talking very soon. I, I appreciate you taking this time out, truly, from the bottom this of my heart. This is cool. I, I feel honored. All right. <laughs> Have a good night. All right. Yeah, when he said he didn't do the show, I was so surprised. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I the show, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, just remember, a good reputation follows you everywhere. It's a bad one that gets up before we get there, so keep that in mind, too. Right. Absolutely. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah, it's definitely be both ways with this show. Right. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I, I, I threw that softball, Dre, for some reason. I did it. I did it. See you later.
All right. All right. All right. Bye. For, for all the new listeners that's checking out, go to the Who That Podcast page. Um, and subscribe, like it, follow us. We got merchandise, everything like Love that. Love to the family. Enjoy yes. a happy birthday to the kids and the wife. Yes. Yeah. Hey, happy birthday. birthday. We forgot about that. Birthday. Is it birthday? Oh, that's his birthday? Oh, his wife's birthday? Oh, okay, okay. Busy one for them. He's not listening. Right. My, my bad. I've got a lot on my mind. It's a big game, <laughs> man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Yeah, so... Yeah, all the listeners, everybody, thank you for, uh, ooh, look, we, we double monitored it now. Oh, I'm sexy from both angles. I'm going to oh, just 86 myself. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. Yeah, anyway, they're anyway, back in control here. So, <laughs> all right, Captain. Yeah. Thank you know, thank um, Jay Lee for coming on. Man, thank pleasure, you. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, and Jasmine. Thank you for having me. Yeah, T Talks is to follow, so um, I'm about to run. Yeah. T Talks tune in. Yeah, yeah. So um but yeah, thanks everybody for, for coming in and uh, you know, joining us and, and listening to Chaz and we're gonna be doing a lot more things like this. We have a movement that we're gonna do and it's gonna essentially help the community, you know, help minorities in the community also. Mm-hmm. Mentorships, uh, trades, things like that. If you're interested, please contact us via the page, okay? Mm-hmm. Contact us and let us know that hey, you know, I'm a plumber. I wouldn't mind doing an apprenticeship for these people. Or yeah, nice. I'm a, you know, HVAC and, barbers, right. salons, um, all this photographers. mechanics, yeah. photographers. Right, yes. right. We are also looking for to a place to facilitate these activities. So if we could get that, let us know. Yeah. You got any leads on anything? If you own anything? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want? You want? You know us to do better we want to better ourselves so that's what we're working on yes. you know so mm-hmm. anything else before we dip uh, uh be blessed don't stress life's just a test all right, all right. Who that? <laughs> 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 <laughs>